many of us would have watched this particular clip on the internet. A U.S. Army veteran confronted ex-president George W. Bush, demanding the former president to apologize for civilian deaths during the Iraq War. Now let's get to the video to know the whole truth. The year 1998, while addressing the State of the Union, President Clinton delivered a chilling message to Congress, reviling alarming intelligence about the notorious Saddam Hussein, the dictator of Iraq. The administration of Bill Clinton gathered data. Saddam was covertly amassing a deadly chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons arsenal. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, President Clinton took swift action. On October 31, 1998, he signed the Iraq Liberation Act, establishing a clear policy of seeking a change in the Iraqi regime. However, it explicitly stated that direct military intervention by American forces was not part of the plan. Determined to disrupt Saddam's dangerous ambitions, the administration initiated a highly classified operation. Desert Fox was a relentless four-day bombing campaign that lasted from December 16 to 19, 1998. The operation aimed to cripple Saddam's weapons of mass destruction program and undermine his grip on power. At the conclusion of this audacious mission, President Clinton made a resolute declaration. He warned that as long as Saddam Hussein remained in power, he would continue to pose an imminent threat not only to his own people but also to the entire region and the world. President Clinton stressed the need for a concerted effort with allies to contain Saddam and impede his pursuit of weapons of mass destruction. Simultaneously, the United States and Britain took action to protect innocent lives in Iraq. Their aircraft patrolled the no-fly zones, engaging in defensive strikes against hostile Iraqi air defenses. In 1999 alone, there were 166 confrontations, and in 2000, there were 78 incidents. The President's words carried a sense of urgency and the weight of global security. It was evident that Saddam Hussein's regime and his relentless pursuit of weapons posed an imminent danger to humanity. After declaring war on Iraq in his last few years of service, Bill Clinton was not able to neutralize Saddam Hussein, but the intention of the American government did not stop there. The work of capturing the Gulf was passed to George Bush, and this is where the real game has begun. Entry of George Bush. Obviously, the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake. George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. The war in Iraq, we spent two trillion dollars, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. More than a million people died in Iraq in just five years of war back in 2003 when invaded by the US military. People, media, and opposition leaders have always accused George Bush of invading Iraq because the reason that was given to the people the settling peace in Iraq was a hoax. The real story was totally different. In the beginning, the conflict the conflict between the US and Iraq was totally brewed upon the ideologies they follow and the partners they had. Before the 9-11 incident, the USSR had control over Iraq, which was like a stone in the eye for the USA. The USA wanted to gain control over the Gulf by targeting Iraq but neutralizing Islamic teaching and dominance, which was not accepted by the extremist group in Iraq back in 2000. And by extremist, I mean Al-Qaeda, a terrorist organization run by Osama bin Laden. Laden. This clash of ideologies was the result when the world witnessed one of the most devastating terrorist attacks, 9-11. But the issue was never the action that took place. It's the negligence of the US government that made it happen. I mean, how would it be possible that 19 people living in the USA from the past one and a half years hijacked four planes and crashed in three different places? Not even a single intelligence or bait received? I mean, that's hard to digest. So the question arises, was it really a failure or the president was looking for a chance? Like if it was bait to get the reason to invade Iraq? See, back in 2000, the USA didn't have any reason how to invade Iraq. But after 9-11, in October 2002, Congress granted permission and power to Bush to launch any military attack in Iraq. And this turns out to be the sole opportunity for the US government to take out things from Iraq they've been craving the most, the crude oil and resources. Chapter 1. Three Main Reasons Why George Bush Invaded Iraq Back in 2000, Iraq was heavily under the control of the USSR, as we have already told you above in the video. But the reason that the US gave to the people was that the people of Iraq were being tortured by the notorious leader Saddam Hussein, and the anarchy that was developed by the leader needed to be stopped to save the people and the administration of the President George Bush tried to showcase Saddam's relations with the extremist groups, Al-Qaeda, and the Mujahideen, but later claims to be a false reason. In 2004, the 9-11 Commission itself 
claimed that there is no evidence between Saddam's regime and Al-Qaeda. The Bush administration's claims about the Saddam and Al-Qaeda relationship based on insufficient evidence were rejected by the intelligence official. So one thing is clear, this was no personal enactment or any cause to give justice or to save people from the so-called evil. Then what was that? Before clinging to the main reason why George Bush invaded Iraq, we need to understand the reasons for war. Why does war happen? And in those three reasons, lies the truth we're looking for. War has three reasons. First is political influence, where one country leader decided to invade the country to gain political appraisal and vote bank. Mussolini's war is the best example of this. East Africa's leader starts a war with a place called Eritrea. Why? Because he wanted to gain popularity among the people of his country, and him winning the war led him to win the election and increase his vote bank. Similarly, on 20 January 2001, George Bush was elected as the 43rd President of America. But within the nine months of his reign, he got a big blow. Yes, the 9-11 attack took place, not scattered a sense of doubt and undependability on his character. In the eyes of the Americans, people started if they had chosen the right president or not. Seeing his downfall, and uncertainty from the people. This was the time when George Bush got a chance to invade Iraq in the name of justice and to acquire things that could make the government and private companies powerful. The second reason was geopolitical dominance. The US government has its hands everywhere, but the Gulf area was still a moon to reach for them. So this event turns out to be the best chance for them. One of the best examples of geopolitical dominance is how Hitler created his Nazi army with German people and later on occupied areas like Austria, the Sikh Republic, parts of France and Italy. Similarly, when the first phase of the Iraq invasion ended the place was flooded with US troops, government officials, and private company owners landing to look after the profit they could make out of that place. So, this is how George Bush made a market for investors out of a war zone that he created intentionally. And little did we know how profitable this would going to be turn out for the Americans. The third reason is the most important among all of the two above. The resources. Back in 2000, the USA produced near about 11,000 barrels of oil per day. And on the other hand, Iraq was producing something like 2.5 billion barrels daily. Clearly, why one would not think of invading and acquiring the natural resources one country had? Other than this one more example suits best for its proof. In 1931, Japan attacked Manchuria and occupied their land for resources. The intention of George Bush was to take out the liquid gold from Iraq and used it to build a an indestructible nation. But the situation has changed now. The USA is on the verge of economic downfall and roaming from place to place to maintain relationships so it the kingdom of hoax doesn't fall apart. By the way, if you haven't watched our video on the USA stock market crash, then please watch it. Coming back to the story of one willingness to acquire wealth, power, and dominance created a massacre in one nation. Exxon Mobil Corporation, ever heard of it? If not, then let me tell you about it. It's USA's biggest oil and gas company. And surprisingly, it had 0.7 million acres of land in Iraq to extract oil. And you know what this was? A company that was set up after the first phase of the Iraq invasion. But before moving forward, look at this article that says, in total, Bush received $1.5 million from the oil industry for his 2000 presidential campaigns. So now, you guys must be understood that the invasion of Iraq was nothing but a payback effort to the people who helped Bush in the beginning, and everything happened as planned. By the end of Iraq's invasion, Exxon's mobile was totally set up in Iraq to extract and supply oil to the USA. Now the things would be clear up. How and why George Bush invaded Iraq in the name of weapons of mass destruction. But things aren't over yet. It is time to know how Iraq was presented or made a weapon of mass destruction. So this was all how George Bush intentionally invaded Iraq. But how did the government and private companies make the profit out of the war? Chapter 2. USA's Profit from the War there are stakeholders in the war that gain profit from the war by any means. For example, by supplying financial help, military alliances, logistics, infra, geopolitical advancements, and medical facilities, these companies and people are often called supporting allies. In 2003, US and Iraq were not alone in the war. There were other countries that were supporting both of them. Though America, on the one hand, has the biggest manufacturer of guns and have an unlimited supply of arms and ammunition, but on the other hand, Iraq's weapon was mostly imported. So how did the 
Iraqis stand for 11 years fighting the war with the US? The answer is supporting allies. US itself acted as an ally by providing things to them. Not directly, of course, but by selling things to the supporting country that was on Iraq's side and made a profit out of it. This is also called the pushers. The US government spends almost 25 million acting as a pusher in the first phase of the war. According to estimates by the National Priorities Project, the total cost of the Iraq war reached a staggering $2.4 trillion by 2021. This astronomical figure encompassed expenses related to military operations, reconstruction efforts, and long-term healthcare for veterans. Such a massive financial commitment not only drained resources from other sectors, but also contributed to soaring national debt, leaving an indelible economic impact on the United States. The consequences were dire. More than a decade of war and occupation left Iraq ravaged, its people suffering, and the U.S. economy burdened with staggering costs. While the true intentions of George W. Bush may forever remain obscured by the fog of politics and the weight of history, there are those who believe that the invasion of Iraq was a calculated maneuver, an intentional gambit driven by a complex interplay of interests. From the pursuit of strategic resources to the reshaping of a region plagued by instability, the invasion served as a catalyst for a broader agenda. So, that was it from our side. Hope your thought would be cleared about the Iraq war. And now, you would have a new perspective. We take you leave now. See you in the next eye-opener video. Till then, like, share, and subscribe to Talk of the Week. Thank you.